Today, I'm going to talk about how we can break perfect crypto with timing attacks. I'm what people call a bad crypto CTF player. As you can see on the right, I only got 75th in the global highest crypto CTF thing. And I also clear all the crypto, but that's considered bad, apparently. I'm also a second year math major, and I maintain a cool blog that you can find this presentation after this talk. So what is crypto? Well, when I talk about crypto, the first thing that you might think about is all the coins. Whenever you see a circle, it's probably a coin, right? That's probably crypto. But no, instead, we're going to talk about another type of crypto, cryptography. We also have a bonus at the end. So first, in our title, we talked about perfect crypto. So let's find some perfect code to break, right? I have an idea, which is to implement a password checker. It is very simple. We have some secret um, password stored in plain text in a secrets.py file. It has a function called check password. It just iterates for each character. And then if the character doesn't match, then it returns false. And if all the characters match, then it returns true. As an attacker, what you're allowed to do is to call this check password function. And your goal is to recover the secret password. At first glance, um, it seems impossible, right? Because the only non-trivial um, output is when the program outputs true. But when it outputs true, it means that your password matches already, which means you already know the password. So that's useless. And in uh, 2023 fashion, we might ask ChatGBT. Even uh, ChatGBT gives up. It says, I can confirm that there are no obvious vulnerabilities. Let, let's take a deeper look into the code. So let's say the password is UWCS, our favorite um, computing society. And let's try password, which is UAAA, because I'm clueless. It will check if the first character matches. It does, because they're both U's. And then it will go on to the next character. And they're different, because one is W and one is A. So it will exit at that. It seems trivial, but let's look at one more example, just to be sure. This time, we're going to try um, UWAA. It's essentially going to do the same thing, except that it's going to iterate twice, right? Because the first two characters match. On the third character, it doesn't match, and then it will exit. By comparing these two examples, we see there is this one really um, important difference, which is that the second example has a longer prefix match, which means that it has more iterations, right? It takes more time to run. This leads to our timing attack. Our idea is to guess the passwords one by one. For example, uh, we start with AAAA, and then BAA, CAA, etc. And then if at a certain guess, it takes a longer time than the previous calls, well, you must have guessed uh, more characters correctly. The loop is going to run for longer. More importantly, the timing thing is also available to the attacker because when you send a request to the server, then you can just measure how long it takes for the server to respond back. And then the code is completely broken. And let's do some analysis before we move on. Is that the attack itself is made possible because the code exists early, right? The, the moment that the characters differ, then it will immediately return false. This algorithm is input dependent. So the, what, what the attacker feeds in, it will leak information which is available to the attacker again. What are some mitigations? Well, the simplest one is to fix all the bugs that I mentioned. So you do not exit early. And more generally, you want to aim for constant time code. I've provided an example of how that might happen. Is that you have a Boolean flag, and then you simply set it to be true or false um, in the loop, and then you return the variable at the end instead of uh, immediately returning. Let's look at our first case study, which is Symfony uh, Library. It's a very popular PHP framework for web applications. As you can see, it has 28.3k stars, which is 28.3k more than my GitHub repo. More importantly, from here, we already see our first uh, vulnerability, which is that it's using PHP, right? But <laughs> apart from that, let's look at some more um, serious code that will actually get us some bug bounties. So after digging into their GitHub, which has like a couple hundred of thousands of lines, we find this class, which has this function. So when it builds a kind of query, then it will compute a hash and compute a, a verify the checksum is correct at the end. The vulnerability here is it uses triple equal sign and PHP, which, is, which turns out to not be constant time. Essentially, it suffers from the same problem as we had just now, which is that it exits early, depending on how many characters in the prefix it matches. And uh, let, let's go even deeper, right? PHP is too high level, apparently. 
So um, going through the PHP source code, we actually see that triple equal sign uses string compare from C. And if you look at the GCC um, implementation, it does essentially what our first Python implementation does. So that's an early return, and that allows for a timing attack. And this on itself is already critical enough to be a, a vulnerability in a very critical part of the code. This vulnerability is uh, reported to the National Vulnerability Database, and it has been assigned a severity of 8.1 out of 10 high severity. If you have these vulnerable versions, you should probably change it as soon as possible. Luckily, um, it's very easy to fix the code here. Because if we look at the PHP um, documentations, it actually um, has a timing attack safe string comparison called hash equals. So we just use that. As you can see, this is the newer, uh, newer patch um, version. If we look at the implementation of hash equals, it sets a flag instead of early returning as uh, our mitigation in the first example shows. Well, let's think about uh, even more consequences, right? So we are, we are essentially saying that mem compare uh, or string compare in GTC is unsafe, right? And a lot of code in GTC um, uses string compare as well. So I searched through the GitHub repo of GCC and there are 1,200 uses of string compare. So it doesn't mean that the entire GCC um, standard library functions are unsafe. Well, not really, not quite, right? Because there are also um, many other factors on whether a timing attack could work, whether, um, so most importantly, of course, is whether the attacker can actually control the parameters, right, to get any information. So thinking back to our talk's title, I said breaking um, perfect crypto, right? So where's the crypto? Let's look at some crypto. So what does RSA? It's a standard encryption protocol. And if you have ever run SSH keygen, then you will probably have seen this um, random picture art. And at the top, you will see um, RSA and then with a random number. And um, if you look in, up on Wikipedia, you see that RSA is actually very simple. It's just three guys and a bunch of math. But um, this is too much math for CS students. I know that CS students can't do math. So it's OK. We're going to simplify everything. And I'm going to give you a single line of Python code, which is this line here, m equals to the power of, uh, c to the power of d modulo n. Right? And this code is run anywhere. Essentially, whenever you need to decrypt something in RSA, you'll run this code. And let's look at the source code of this Python um, PAL function. So this is a snippet of the code, and we focus on these lines. We have a big for loop here, and then similar to just now, we have a if condition, right? We have a branch. The time it takes to run this code will depend on how long the branch takes. Inside, we set c equals to c times a, where c, again, is um, chosen by the attacker because c is uh, what you're trying to decrypt, right? What the server is trying to decrypt. If you um, do some math and choose it carefully, you can make it so that at a specific bit, um, it will take longer or slower, and then from that information, uh, you can verify whether the bit, uh, whether the branch is actually taken or not. Uh, here are some technical details if you want to read it. And this problem actually appeared in the CTF before. And uh, if you want to look at the actual implementation, uh, here is a website by our team captain uh, to show that it's actually practical. Just want to talk about the impact. Um, this, this uh, I've only talked about um, RSA, which is a specific um, cryptography um, encryption or signature protocol, but it's actually generalizable to a lot of other cryptography protocols. Most importantly, there's one called ECDSA, which is used in Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, like hashing and uh, signing blocks. If this timing attack can be implemented in some Bitcoin and Ethereum related stuff, then your um, crypto wallets might be hacked, right? Indeed, um, if we look at the CVE, which is the um, bug report uh, tracker that I mentioned, then you see that there are all kinds of bugs everywhere in a lot of libraries. These two are RSA, and the top one is ECDSA. And they are all like pretty medium or high criticality. And finally, I want to talk about um, one more addition to this timing attack idea. To motivate this, I want you to think about um, when you were playing Valorant or something and you were uh, connecting to the Korean servers uh, like across the world, right? And suddenly, your ping goes from 10 ms to 200 milliseconds. And the same thing can happen with a server connection, right? If you connect with a 
server far away or the network is just unstable, then the timing, uh, all, all the timing information that we mentioned just now won't work because if your timing is uh, like 30 milliseconds or like even 60 milliseconds, but then your variance is like 100 milliseconds, then it's meaningless, uh, the timing uh, information. To fix this, we need to introduce some background first. So there is this um, new version of HTTP, which introduces a new feature called multiplexing. It essentially allows multiple requests to be sent over a single connection. So for example, if you load a HTML page, and you need to load both the CSS and JavaScript, right? And in uh, one point something, then you can only send it one by one through a single TCP connection. It will be processed um, sequentially, right? But with multiplexing, you can send them, you can batch them into a single request, and then the server uh, will receive them simultaneously, and then can process them asynchronously, which speeds up everything, right? And this can be uh, used for us because we can use this multiplexing idea to send two requests of um, the timing queries. Of course, instead of um, receiving the exact time uh, it takes, which uh, so, so the 30 milliseconds and 45 milliseconds that we saw uh, all the way at the start, um, which suffers from the problem of like ver large variance, right? We can instead observe the order that the packets return. If we send two requests and they arrive simultaneously at the server, but one comes back later than the other, that must mean that that uh, specific query takes longer to execute on the server than the other one, right? Our string comparison takes longer. We have matched more um, characters, and the rest follows as with sufficiently many guesses, uh, you can find the correct guess. Statistically, it will uh, dominate, right? Again, this has happened before, uh, although in a CTF scenario, and it has been demonstrated to be um, reliable, and also um, researchers have shown that you can detect uh, up to microseconds uh, difference of execution time, even through a very noisy network uh, connection, right? Because network, you're talking about milliseconds of variance, but you can detect um, up to tens of microseconds of variance in quite few um, requests. So to conclude, right, cryptography is hard, and Something that seems um, unbreakable, for example, our simple um, checking, uh, comparing two strings, might be broken by so-called unconventional methods, right? One must keep that in mind, especially when you're implementing like important software. So, for example, the web framework that is used by like thirty thousand people, right? I would also like to mention that there are also other types of side channel attacks. For example, um, instead of timing, you can, um, if you have access to an embedded device. Then you can look at this power trace, uh, the amount of power consumption of the CPU performing certain actions, and also like, and, and you can essentially analyze that. Or maybe a more realistic conclusion is that being a software engineer is really hard, and that if you get something wrong, your code might be broken by someone, and then you might get fired. I don't think Warwick teaches it, or if it does, I'm not aware of it. And um, even ChatGPT can't save you now. Uh, this is uh, the CV search of timing attacks, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.